People pay millions to live in one peninsula community. In fact, it's ranked as the most expensive zip code in the country to own a home. But after multiple deaths in Atherton, our investigative unit found it's also home to one of the deadliest roads for pedestrians in the Bay Area. Investigative reporter Candace Wynn brought the issue to officials, spoke to families who say this is an equity issue. And a warning tonight, some of this video is disturbing. When night falls on the edge of Atherton and Menlo Park, an orange glow illuminates the Menlo Park side of El Camino Real, while parts of the Atherton side disappear into darkness. This is where bus driver Jimmy Marina, who we spoke to in an earlier report, had seconds to react to a woman with dementia walking in the road. He said his bus headlights were dim. <laughs> Had there been a better lighting on the whole street light, on that whole side of El Camino, that lady could have been walking into that sidewalk and being safe in that sidewalk. But when the sun rises, you realize there is no sidewalk. This three to four foot wide overgrown patch of grass borders Atherton fences. I'm here on El Camino Real at Isabella Avenue. I'm going to count how many street lights there are on this southbound side versus the northbound side. This is one. This is two, three, four. There are four street lights on the southbound side. As for the northbound side, we counted 17 street lights. So why the difference? The side with the most street lights is Menlo Park, which allows commercial zoning and the lighting that goes with it. The side with only four street lights is Atherton, which is commercial free. Atherton has a population of just over 7,000 mostly wealthy residents who value their town's no sidewalk rural charm. But at what cost, wonders Joey Chen. Her mother was killed by a minivan near Alejandra Avenue. Police say the cause of the collision is unknown. The doctor was very kind, but she said, we're just pouring, you know, blood into your mother, but she, she's gone. My mom... You know, I discouraged her from driving, and that day she had been for a walk, and she was probably going to get, you know, toys for her cat. The driver never has contacted us. In the police report, he says he thought maybe it was a, a garbage dumpster or a dog. The investigative unit analyzed 10 years of federal collision data. 2021 and 2022 are not available due to reporting delays. But between 2011 and 2020, El Camino Real in and along Atherton had a disproportionately high pedestrian death rate. The crashes happened both day and night. Atherton's pedestrian death rate is significantly higher than all these major Bay Area cities and more than double and triple these nearby cities. You never expect that it's going to happen to your family. And then you're notified that your brother was mowed down. Michael Lascano says his brother James didn't have a car and was trying to get to a bus stop across El Camino Real when he was struck. When you look at that bus stop right there in the grass with that trash can, what goes through your mind? Dangerous. That's just an accident waiting to happen. And I think the hardest thing for me, and it really saddens me, Is it knowing that um, James's son, Marcelo, will never get to know his father? Chen's mother and Lascanos' brother are two of the four pedestrians killed on this stretch in the past decade. In 2014, 32 year old Shariar Rahim Zadeh of Atherton was killed while crossing near Almondral Avenue. He was walking home. A year later, a minivan killed Chen's 86 year old mother. In 2020, an SUV struck Loscanos' brother near Watkins. And last year, 78-year-old Sol Gloria, a wife and mother with dementia, was killed by a Sam Trans bus on the Atherton side of El Camino near Valparaiso. These crashes all happened in the same area where Atherton's police chief told us in this email bike lanes and sidewalks would improve safety. And where Atherton's own mayor says he doesn't always feel safe. When I bike, I, I try to avoid El Camino. I just feel it's safer to go on another street. It says it's 35 there, but you know nobody's going 35. 
El Camino Real is a state highway and is under Caltrans's jurisdiction. After more than a month of requests, no one from Caltrans agreed to speak with us. They sent us a statement saying Caltrans is aware of the pedestrian safety concerns on El Camino Real. The agency says it upgraded five intersections in Atherton and added crosswalk beacons like this one. But when it comes to sidewalks and bicycle infrastructure, Caltrans says it's still working on it. This has been a known issue. The people have got to wake up to the fact that everyone's life matters. Everyone's life has value. But I do think that people go fast in our stretch um, and they slow down at Menlo Park because Menlo Park's, you know, they've got lights on almost every corner. Is that something Atherton can do or wants to do? Well, I don't know if the Caltrans wants to do it. OK, we don't have the money to put in lights at every light, every location. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, I'm not sure that we need a light at every location. And this is, to me, a real matter of equity. The people speeding down El Camino are cruising in their Teslas and their BMWs. But the people who are walking on El Camino, maybe they're a worker who can only take the bus. Maybe they're a kid running for the bus. Maybe they're an unhoused person. And really, aren't they the people we should try hardest to take care of? Caltrans says it finished the pedestrian safety project here on El Camino Real in 2018. It mostly consisted of signs and street markings you can still see today. A year after those changes, though, Atherton's public works director wrote a letter to town officials saying this stretch still had some of the most collisions in Atherton. With the investigative unit, I'm Candace Wen, NBC Bay Area News. If you have a story for our investigative unit, call 888-996-TIPS or visit our website, nbcbayarea.com slash investigations.